have been a part of many major decisions, first in government and politics, and then uh, now during your time at KKR. How would you describe your style of decision making? We have a quote that on a, on a desk that was given to us by all us being the partners at KKR by George Roberts, one of our founders. And the quote is a Yogi Berra quote, which says, if you don't know where you're going, you're probably not likely to get there. The most important thing when you're thinking about a decision is what are you trying to achieve? What's your purpose? What's your underlying goal? Without that goal, without that purpose, that North Star, so to speak, it's very hard to make a good decision. So do you try, when you think about things, do you try to think uh, like ahead of yourself, like where I are do. we trying to go? I try in everything I do in my life, I try to think in terms of five-year goals and 10-year goals. And then obviously you work back to shorter term goals. If you don't have a long-term goal that then you can reduce to what I would describe as a daily battle rhythm, things you will do every day to achieve that, and metrics you can look at on a regular basis, they might be weekly, they might be monthly, they might be quarterly, then you're much less likely to achieve your goal. You need to find two or three areas that are very important to you. They could be professional, they could be in a relationship you have, they could be in a health area. But the point is, find a few things that are really consequential and really important, and think about what do I want that to look like in five years, and then reduce that to a process by which you're making sure you're regularly building that into your life. Let's talk about the Chan Zuckerberg initiative yeah. that you are now heading with uh, David Pluff. Right, I'm, I'm chairing their policy advisory board. The initiative's obviously larger than just that part of it, but it's a very exciting initiative. A lot of people I know uh, who are wonderful people kind of view their life as chapter one is business and chapter two is philanthropy. And they don't view it that way. They want to be philanthropically engaged and engaged in uh, making the world a better place from the time that they're quite young, which allows them then to spend uh, you know, 50 or 60 years making a real difference. What's exciting to me is if you combine a 60-year focus with engineering mindset and a willingness to take experiments and fail and learn from them, I think you can do a whole lot of good. I'm sure you've heard many people say, in order to get good at something, you have to make a lot of mistakes. Yes. So do you agree with that? Completely. Now, why is that? Uh, because I think ultimately all of us are inherently not only flawed because we don't know everything and we can't predict the future, but we all suffer from confirmation bias. We're all biased toward how we want the world to be. And we're biased toward what's the path of least resistance. And what often forces us to overcome those biases and come up with the right decision and the right answer are mistakes and our humility in recognizing our own flaws and our own limits. That doesn't come naturally. That comes when you've made mistakes, when you've stubbed your toe. And when you therefore say, based on that, what can I learn about the future? Can you recall any decision that seemed matter of fact at the time, which turned out to have huge consequences? So a very interesting decision that really falls in that category, I think. Uh, if you remember in the 2000 election, President Bush lost the popular vote, but won the electoral vote. And we won it by 500 votes in Florida. So it was a close call. <laughs> and at the end of that, um, we've tried to figure out what had happened. Vice President Gore had done a better job than we had in turning out the vote. And so we created something called the 72 hour program that figured out what in the last 72 hours of the 2000 campaign can we learn from to do better in the future? And the result was that in 2001 and 2002 and 2003, every single campaign that occurred had an experiment in it of a better way to reach voters, both in the last 72 hours and throughout the process. And it wasn't just a small experiment. It was in one county in Michigan, we put up no television ads, uh, but literally had people knocking on a door each weekend. And that ultimately led us to the data mining that we did in 2004, which was at the time unprecedented. In which you got, were famous for. I and, mean, that and started course, a whole new era of Well, and the, and the Obama campaign took our Model T Ford and turned it into a Lamborghini. But the reality is that that occurred because we decided that we weren't going to take this, what was, I thought, a setback. I had been the field director of the first campaign. You could have rationalized it, right? You could have said, well, here's why that happened, or here's the, here's the, stat that proves why we were right. And I thought that was a mistake. I said, let's embrace that we came up short and let's get better. And to me, that was a really important decision that had very significant implications. And I think it led to what President Bush's reelection in 2004.